When we return, we'll sit down with Rocky Sanchez Navarro, Vice President of Rare Philippines, to talk about the group's campaign to help stop overfishing and safeguard food security in the country. This is Nightly News. Each year, there are more and more reports on the decline of our marine resources and the urgency to take immediate action to avoid catastrophic levels. Last week, Rare Philippines, a nonprofit organization focused on marine conservation, launched the Fish Forever campaign using social marketing techniques to change the way fisherfolk think about marine resources in order to curb overfishing and safeguard food security throughout the Philippines. To tell us more, we have Rocky Sanchez Terona, Vice President of Rare Philippines. Good evening, Rocky. And sorry about that mistake earlier. No problem. <laughs> Good evening, Itzy. Good evening. Now, Rare has been around, headquartered in the U.S. for 25 years. Yes. So tell us a little about Rare and then its presence in the Philippines. All right. So Rare is an international conservation organization. And basically, the way we work is uh, really looking for proven conservation solutions, or what we call bright spots, and replicating them in different places through, uh, by inspiring people to change their behaviors. Uh, so that nature will benefit. Yes. Yeah. So you have a very unique um, uh, technique that you use. Tell yes. us about why you decided to use social marketing. marketing. Okay, so you know how uh, marketing really helps uh, commercial goods, right? And it yes. really sells. It, it's, right. it's a way of life. So we know that there's a science behind that, and that's the science that we've applied to social good. So okay. using the same strategy of uh, researching your target audience, understanding the kind of messages that they respond to, and knowing what are the triggers that will uh, change their behavior, that's what we now apply to get, let's say, fishers to stop doing I illegal right. uh, practices or destructive fishing. Yeah. Well, that makes and, sense. Yeah. And you've done this successfully in many countries, yes. haven't you? Yeah. So you have something called the Pride Campaigns. Tell yes. us about this. Yeah, okay. So a uh, Pride Campaign is actually run not by Rare, but by what we call Conservation Fellows. They're people from local communities uh, that we recruit into a program. Uh, we train them to, uh, in social marketing and in Pride techniques. Mm -hmm. And then they're the ones that actually work with their communities and run campaigns. So you'll see them really running uh, what look like advertising campaigns. They've got mascots, they've got jingles and posters, yes. and, and they're really convincing fishers to, to see the, the difference in, in uh, how they should be right. uh, behaving towards it their It seems the usual information campaigns of just putting billboards, posters, they don't really work. So yes. you need to go another step yes. further. Yes, yes. There's really a science to it. It yeah. really uses uh, psychology and, and, yes. and social science. So if we take a particular case study, you recently launched the Fish Forever campaign yes. last week in Cebu. No? How, yes. how is this? How, what is it, uh, the campaign all about? All right. So Fish Forever is actually Rare's first global initiative. We've partnered with uh, two other uh, organizations, the Environmental Defense Fund and the University of California in Santa Barbara. So together, the three of us have actually agreed to work on solutions to and uh, well to reform overfishing mm -hmm. uh, in near shore communities. And it uses uh, pride campaigns or social marketing as one cornerstone aspect of it to build community support. But it really involves a lot of other uh, a lot of other science. So there's yes. fishery management, and then something that we call managed access, mm -hmm. which is really giving uh, fishers um, in a particular association or group exclusive access to, to fish in a particular area. This okay. becomes their incentive for actually behaving more sustainably. So in exchange for uh, guarding and protecting uh, a particular area, they get first rights uh, to, Very to fish. Very smart. In so that it's really area. that sense of ownership. Ownership, yes. exactly. Yeah. Okay. Can yeah. you tell us about some of the people? You have a wonderful video where you talk about the people, the the stewards of this area. Right. Like, okay. So so we work in a lot of different sites all over the country. So we've finished campaigns in in 25 different uh, province. Uh, Sorry, municipalities yes. in Mindoro, in Bicol, uh, Zambales, Surigao, yeah. Samboanga. And then Great. we work with different levels in the community. So we definitely have to have a mayor who's really a champion that really believes yes. uh, in marine resource protection. Mm -hmm. And then we work with the legislative body within that, that uh, community. And then there are the, the actual members of the community. So they're people who work in the yes. management committees, enforcement committees. They're, they're really people who get, who get into it and they learn how to 
how to participate in yes. the campaign and find ways to, to contribute uh, yes. what they do. So this is the example of Ipil Zamboanga, yes. where the mayor actually himself oh. realized, oh, yeah. thanks to your uh, participation, that yes, the old traditional you know posters, billboards didn't work unless you really added more, more um, uh, science and yes. yeah, and, right. and really building community support. Yeah, in in Ipil, it's actually uh, one of our. Uh, case, you know, it's really a bright spot because yes. aside from applying it to coastal resources, they've actually applied it to all their other activities like health and, yes. and education. So That's wonderful. So a, tell us what makes it successful? What would be the elements of success okay. for Fish Forever? Well, for Fish Forever, um, we've actually um, identified eight key key aspects of it. So community mm -hmm. support is one that, yes. that will really allow uh, fishers to to understand and then later on support the setup of these managed access areas that we mm -hmm. talked about. And yeah. then we've got the managed access areas, which is really the exclusive rights. We need to have a marine protected area or a no-take zone mm -hmm. where fish can really reproduce and, uh, right. and, and keep, um, you know, Basically, the spawning. Spill, yeah, yes, spawning, yes, and yes, then yes. Uh, there should be a spillover yes. um, for for the for the other areas. Yes. And then there really has to be strong enforcement. There has to be uh, strong monitoring and evaluation, to, so that the fishers themselves know that the the cat that the fish uh, is is increasing. So right. the, so that they really see that. And then we have a policy, so it really has to tie together. Yes. Um, and then there has to be like ongoing adaptive fisheries management, which means all these other things of gears uh, using right. the right gear the the right season uh, seasonal op closures and, yeah. and obviously like science that. is very important and yes. collaboration is very important oh so yeah this is yeah. Not government, partnerships government yeah. and corporations yes we we also partner with academe mm -hmm. uh, quite heavily so mm -hmm. so like the University of the Philippines Marine Science Institute is a par has been a partner from from the yes. very beginning so obviously this doesn't happen overnight this is quite no. a long process yeah. isn't it, it yeah it you know it's uh, you don't just teach the fi uh, teach them how to fish you yes. gotta teach them to fish right and then you have to wait for the fish to grow that's right and the point is rare <laughs> is there to help them, but you will not be there forever. You want yes. the communities to yeah. really survive on their own. Yeah, so the, the, the core of our program is really capacity building. It's really yes. letting the communities themselves learn what it takes to, mm -hmm. to get it done so that they can keep doing it even after right. uh, the project is over. Okay, so what can we expect maybe in the if people want to help or you know think coming into this uh, campaign? Yeah, well there are many ways. Uh, Definitely for, for our leaders, we have 873 coastal communities in the, yes. in the Philippines. So, you know, yes. every mayor that actually uh, prioritizes uh, um, marine resources is somebody that's looking out for his uh, constituency's um, food security yes. and livelihood. So that's right. definitely one. And then as citizens, we, we also can support these pride campaigns by, by really... Uh, encouraging our fishers to do the right thing so even in in little things like when we don't buy fish that's too small yes. that actually encourages them to to wait until they get bigger right. so so it's or things illegally like that. farmed or even aquarium fish that are illegally yeah. taken yeah right? yeah and so why should we care it's because we really do rely on fish as a big oh yeah protein, yeah right? we're so like um you know 60 million uh, 60 percent of our protein comes yeah. from fish uh, here yeah. in the philippines yeah yeah. Well, thank you very much, Rocket. All the best to you, and thank look you forward to hearing more. Maybe come back to tell us more. All right. Next time. <laughs> thank, thank you very, very much. much. Okay. Thanks again for joining us, Rocky Sanchez Derona of Rare Philippines. And those were the day's top stories. I'm Mitzi Borromeo. Catch former UFC champion and now one FC vice president, Rich Franklin, on Sports Desk with Gino Rafino and Cheska Litton. That's up next. Thanks for watching. Good night.